Let us look to Lord. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Eternal merciful Lord, we come to you right now, God. We thank you for this time. We thank you for this opportunity. God, we thank you, Lord, that we can come together and worship you, Lord, in spirit and in truth. Lord, we thank you, God, for your words. Oh, God, I pray right now that you may give an articulation of speech and clarity of mind to preach the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. My beloved brothers and sisters, on this Pentecost Sunday, the first Sunday in June, I am led to uh, preach from Acts of the Apostles, Acts chapter 2, starting at verse 1 through 8. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 8. And I will be reading in your hearing from the New Revised Standard Version. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this, at, and at this time, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not these who are speaking Galileans and how is it that we hear each of us, and how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? For just a few moments, my friends, I want to preach from the topic, the birth of a church. The birth of a church. Let's be honest for a second. Losing somebody is painful in our life. No matter how much you love that person, no matter how much you've cherished that person, when that person exits this life and makes a transition from the earthly world to the transition to the spiritual world, there's a sense of loss, there's a sense of grief. I don't care how holy you are, how much you know the Lord, how often you can quote the scriptures. In a real sense, when there is loss, you will experience pain, you will experience bewilderment, and you will start questioning God, saying, God, well, how do I get through what I need to get through? I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but all of us have experienced loss in our lives. Loss of a family member, loss of a friend. Lost of a job, something that we held so dear to that we had a significant loss. To. And because of that loss, it, le it left us scratching our head. God, what is up now? God, I just really can't make sense. God, what's the game plan? God, I know you're supposed to be good and great. But for some reason, God, I'm tore up. I'm hurting. I have too many questions. Am I talking to somebody right now that can ask yourself, say, God, I've gone through so much pain. And because of this pain, God, I need to find out, is there a bomb in Gilead. I need to know, God, is there a light at the end of the tunnel? Well, all of us have experienced pain, but the pain I want to talk about is a different type of pain this morning, my friends. As we go back in our history and our Black history, we find that the pain of Black Wall Street, you know, Black Wall Street back in the 1920s was devastated because of sick races did not want to see People of color excel. You know, people of color were doing the things. They were owning businesses. They were thriving. They were living prosperously. But all of a sudden, because of people, sick people had an issue with Black folks thriving. And you do understand what happened because of their racist act, because of their demonic actions. They set the town on fire and you do realize what happened. Their fire, the fire destroyed businesses. It destroyed homes and it destroyed dreams because too many people who did not look like them got upset at their prosperity. And because of that, 
Black Wall Street was burned down to the ground. Can you imagine that for a second, my friends? You're living prosperous. You're doing what God has called you to do. And all of a sudden, in the midst of doing what God has called you to do, something has been snatched. But thank God that God is always still on the throne. As I come to our text, can you imagine how the disciples felt, my friends, that their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who they've been walking with for three years, they saw miracles after miracles and all of a sudden they saw their friend they saw their king they saw their lord and savior not just crucified on the tree but if we want to become real blunt with it he was lynched on the tree yes we know jesus died for our sins but jesus was lynched on the tree because he dared to challenge our roman government he dared to challenge systems because you know Jesus was always for the least and the left out. Jesus wanted to bring justice to those who were unjust. Jesus always tried to correct systems. And because of Jesus' uh, outward ministry, because of who Jesus was and because of who Jesus was connected to, and because of the movement that Jesus was doing during that time, you do realize that people sought out to kill him and they thought they succeeded. We understand, Brother Douglas, that they had the thought that they had him on one Friday, that they hung him up on the cross because of insurrection, because they realized that we're going to kill this Jew. We're going to kill this Savior because he's messing up Caesar's program. They thought they had him there, but we do understand what happened up early Sunday morning, Sister Dorothy. Early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hands, and because he got up with all power in his hands, he is able to do anything and everything. And because he's able, we are now able. I know I'm talking to somebody right now because the same power that got Jesus up is the same power that can get all of us up. But hold on for a second. We do realize that when Jesus got up with all power in his hands, he had 12 disciples, but you do realize one committed suicide for over some money. Isn't that something? The same one that was hanging with Jesus, that saw Jesus, sold Jesus out for some money. And I need to park right there and say, guess what? I don't care who you are or who you hang with, how spiritual or not. Everybody who's hanging with you and not everybody who is associating with you has your best intentions in mind. There are some people who just want to hang on your coattails for the contacts. There are some people who just want to hang on your coattail because they realize when you get blessed, they want part of the peace. They want a part of the puzzle. They don't want to work. They don't want to do anything. Thing. They just want to use you and then abuse you. And at the time, when it's time to sell you, they will sell you out for a reputation and sell you out for some money. But hold on for a second. You do realize when Jesus was resurrected, he did show himself to some of his disciples. And the Bible says, Brother Avery, and, and Matthew, that when Jesus showed himself to his disciples that he had risen, not all of his disciples accepted him. Not all of his disciples believed him. Hold on for a second. You saw Jesus give sight to the blind. You saw Jesus make the lame walk. You saw Jesus raise Lazarus from the dead. And then when Jesus shows up on the scene and says, here I am, I've risen from the dead. As the Bible says that some of his disciples believed and a whole lot of us didn't. But good, the good news is, is that Jesus still has the throne. I thank God for those who decided to believe and press on anyway. That's my word for you right now. When it seems like it's impossible, you need to understand that Jesus is still on the throne, that Jesus still has power. And because of that, we do find that the disciples were getting kind of nervous. And, and because they were nervous, they were all huddled in a room. And because they were all huddled in a room on one accord, that's just what the Bible says they were on one accord. They were praying and worshiping. The commentators said there was roughly about 100 to 120 of Sister Wanda. And because of 120 people together on one accord in one place worshiping, we got Pentecost showing up. You do realize that Pentecost means 50. It means 50 days after Passover. Well, you know what? Jesus showed up and showed out on 40 days after Passover. And guess what? Add 10 more days. It's the 50th day. The 50 means Pat means Pentecost. It means bringing the 
first fruits, it means that there's a party going on because we're bringing the first fruits to our God. And guess what? Jesus has now given the birth of the church through his spirit. And that's what the Bible says that on the day of Pentecost, while they was on one accord, they heard a sound coming down from heaven and like a violent wind. And you do realize that the spirit is like a wind. You don't know where it's coming from, but it comes. And the good news that it overtook the whole room was simply means that wherever God's spirit tends to come in, it does not it does not mean that locked doors can't keep out God's spirit. Oh, I'm loving that right there. No matter what happens, God's spirit will come in and show up and show out in your life, no matter the locked doors, no matter the dead situation, as long as we're coming on one accord, God's spirit will come in and show up and show out. And then it says, the Bible lets us know that when the spirit came in, it fell on the people and they had divided tongues that they would start speaking in different languages. Hold on for a second because that would let somebody know right there that God will give you the ability to speak another language. And see, I know, I know I'm going to step on some toes already, sister, sister, sister. Sister Teresa, because when people think about speaking in tongues in this text, they're thinking about speaking a foreign language. But I'm here to let you know that there were 120 people in the house. And because there's 120 people in the house, there were Galileans who did not understand this language, could not speak to other languages. But God said, I'm so good. I'm going to give you the language of people in your vicinity so that you can spread my good. Uh, that's some good news right there. God can make intelligent folk intelligent. God can say, you know what, just because you, did, you don't speak the language, I'm going to give you the words to speak the language of my praise. That's what happens when he gave them the tongues of fire and all sat down on them. And you know what the Bible said. They said, hold on for a second. We hear these people speaking in our own language sister Dorothy aren't these Galileans they can't speak our language but we hear them speaking our own language and mm -hmm. guess what that mm -hmm. shows you God's power right there because that's the birth yeah. of a church that you can speak your you can speak somebody's language you didn't go to school for it you didn't study it but guess what God's power came in and because it came in we start seeing the birth of the church because the birth of the church now has power it has power not only because of Jesus, but because of his Holy Spirit, because it enables us to go out and preach. It enables us to go out and teach. It enables us to go out and be a testimony on how good God is. The birth of a church is just not a meeting place, but the birth of a church is a place whereby we can proclaim God's news. The birth of a church is whereby we can help heal people spiritually, physically, emotionally, mentally, why by our words and our actions? Because we have power from on high that can cause, that can make us do anything but fail. And I'm loving that right there because they were sitting in bewilderment, in bewilderment, my brothers and sisters, because they're scratching their head. How can this be? We see 120 people are now all speaking in tongues, 120 people giving God praise, 120 people lifting up the holy, holy name of God. Why? Because the spirit of God came in, it came in, and it showed up and showed out. I'm loving that right there. And can you imagine when the church comes together, when we all come together on one accord? And that's my first point right there. When the birth of a church is that we all need to come together on one accord and worship God in spirit and in truth. I'm loving that right there, Brother Avery, because when we come together and worship God yeah. in spirit and in truth, Sister Taffy, great things happen. When we worship God in spirit and in truth and on one accord, deliverance happens, miracles take place, God's power will show up and show out. Why? Because we're on the same place doing the same thing on one accord. Yes, we may have our likes and dislikes. Yes, we may come from different sides of the trash, but guess what? When we're coming together in God's house, when we make up our mind that we're going to worship God, not because of what we can get, but because of who he is, all of a sudden God says, I will now come down and pour out a blessing upon you. You want to see power come together on one accord and worship God. Well, well you do realize um. The word worship in Greek in this case means proskuneo. I love the word 
proskuneo is the Greek word for worship, and, and it gives a depiction, the word proskuneo gives a depiction of a dog licking the hand of his master. Now, mm -hmm. and if you ever had dogs before, you do realize you can treat the dog any kind of way, but the dog will always lick the hand of his master because the dog realizes that the master is the one that feeds it, that realizes that the master is the one that takes care of it, realizes that the master is the one that will always provide a shelter. And I'm here to let you know, maybe sometimes we need to have some dog sense of us and worship the Lord because God hand we need to worship God say thank you Lord Amen. for the hand that you've done for me God Amen. thank you for feeding me Lord thank you for delivering me Lord thank you for providing blessings upon blessings oh God so when we come together and worship God we're not just going to worship God because of what we get we're going to worship God because of who he is Amen. and when we worship Amen. God for Amen. who he is then we're going to see God show up and show out like we've never seen before do I have a witness here? Can yeah, you just imagine yeah. what the church would happen, what happened mm -hmm. if the church ever came together and put aside politics, put aside all the other nonsense and says, you know what? We're going to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. And then we're going to find out, we're going to see how good God is. I know, Sister mm -hmm. Betty, you're feeling me right there because we know how good God is right yeah. now. Once God shows up yeah, in Lord. our life, we're going to see how God can do miraculous mm -hmm. things. And we know what God Hallelujah. By mm -hmm. We may be a little bit down for the count, but guess what? We're on God's team. We're coming together yeah. and worshiping yeah. God. And because we're worshiping God, we're going to see God turn fidelity upside down. We're going to take over the community, not just spiritually. We're going to take over the community economically to let the community know that, hey, you know, we are voice in the church. We're voice in the community because we are the birth of the church we're operating in power and that's my second point for you right now the birth of a church simply lets us know that we have power given to us from on high mm. Mm. we talked about it earlier brother duck how we need to get out and vote yes we need to get out and vote i can't tell you who to vote for but i'm gonna tell you get out and vote get educated on the issues but guess what yes politicians may think they have power but they don't have no power unless god allows them to have that power but guess what mm -hmm. when politicians says no god can always say yes i don't care what nobody do they may try to steal your votes they may try to block our votes but guess what we have god on our side and because right. we have god on Amen. our side no weapon formed against us shall prosper yeah. that's why god has given it's the power of our voices. Yes, we have tongues to speak. We have tongues to preach. But God's given us a voice, my beloved brothers and sisters, to tell somebody that God is still on the throne. We have mm -hmm. a voice to tell somebody Amen. that with God and through Man. God, all things are Amen. possible. Amen. Who am I talking Amen. to when the birth of the church gets this act together? Then we can change the whole world around. And that's why we have the black church, because you do realize the many of the white churches back then, they were always teaching suppression. They was always making us feel less than they were not addressing issues. But thank God for the black church, because the black yes. church brought about civil rights. The black church yes. looked at black yes. folks and you know what? Yes. You are somebody. You're not yes. less than, but you are creating yes. God's own image. And because of the black church, we have voting rights because of the black yes. church. We have HBCUs because of yes. the black church. Yes. We have educational institutions because of the black church. We have people in office today. Why? Because they came to the black church and understood that we don't serve a white Jesus, but we <laughs> serve a black Christ who says, you know what, if you just come to me and I will give you power to do anything Amen. and everything because it's the birth of the church. That's why we come for Pentecostal Sunday to understand that we have that fire. It may have happened 2,000 years ago, but guess what? That fire back then, Sister Taft, is that same fire we have right now when we mm -hmm. hook up with Jesus. Because I want to let you know, we do have the birth of the church as long as we come together in unity on one accord, praising God. And to understand that the power we have can enable us to do great things through Amen. Christ Jesus. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Amen. Eternal God, we thank you, God. We bless your holy name, oh God. We, we praise you, God, for being so awesome.
Mm. We thank you, God, for the birth of the church, Lord. So right now, God, there may be somebody here, God, under the sound of my voice, God, they have never accepted you as their personal Lord and Savior, God. I pray right now that they may accept you right now, God, that they may say, right here I am, oh God. I'm giving my life to you, God. I've tried everything and I've tried other, other, other things, oh God, but I haven't tried you. If mm. I'm talking to you right now, why don't you give your life to Jesus right now? And also, mm. if, if you're looking for a church home, why not consider Fidelity and Me Church? Why not make Fidelity your church home? Guess what? I, I know there's many people who say, you know, I'm trying to find the perfect church. Well, I got news for you. I'm, I'm, I'm about to bust your bubble. There is no perfect church because guess what? I'm in the church. I'm sorry. I make some mistakes. As soon as you come to the church, all of us got issues we're working on. But guess what? Our issues, we can turn our issues to a savior who can say, you know what? Cast all your cares upon me and I will take care of you because I love you. So if you're looking for a church that will love you, looking for a church that will minister to you, looking for a church that cares about you, not just one part, but cares about all of you, want to come and be part of Fidelity and Me Church today. You can do so today. You can do so. Don't wait, hesitate, or procrastinate. Let the Lord lead you and guide you. Am I talking to one? Amen. Let's 